Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here to talk about my second half of February wrap up. So uh, in the second half of February, I did quite a bit of reading, but I'm filming this on March 2nd and we have a terrible stomach bug in our house. It's not like a 24 hour tummy bug. It's something that's going around like Kansas City in general and it's like a five day stomach bug. And so if I'm a little disheveled, a little less energy than normal, that would be why. Um, but that means I have been on the couch for the past five days with um, at least one child or myself being sick. And so um, I've gotten a fair amount of reading done. So let's talk about the stats and then the books. So uh, in the second half of February, I read 14 books and DNF'd one. That's 4,658 pages, which is an average of 333 pages per day. However, before anybody goes patting me on the back, uh, a lot of these are graphic novels, as you will see. So it's kind of skewed. Um, the average length was 333 pages per book. That's one book a day. And um, yeah, so I read nine novels and five graphic novels. Um, eight were adult, one was young adult, and five were middle grade. Uh, four were from my shelf and 10 were from somewhere else. So, you know, that's not what I want to be doing. I, I really prefer to read off my shelves, but I don't really own very many graphic novels at all. And I was just on a tear, so so it goes. Um, five were from the library, three were t just taken off my shelf, uh, three I used Libby, and three were from NetGalley. So that's good to get some NetGalley books read, but um, yeah, eight were physical, and six were audiobooks, so actually more physical reads than audiobooks, which is crazy, but I mean, that's what graphic novels are. I, I would not, I don't like to read them on ebook or anything, so there's that. Um, as far as genres go, or did I already say uh, four new release and ten backly backlist? So when I'm working on NetGalley, of course, um, there's going to be some new releases and stuff. So um, as far as genre goes, we have five contemporary, three women's fiction, two nonfiction, two mystery thriller, one nature, which means for me an animal main character, and um, one romance. So star ratings: I had one DNF, one two star, two two and a half stars, five three stars two three and a half stars and four four stars so ratings wise it was a very meh period of the month um my average rating was 3.21 which is just really okay so um a lot of these books as i'm going through them like i have had to look up what they're about because i have already forgotten and it's been like two weeks or less since i read them so i don't know what that tells you but yeah so let's get into the books. Um, first, I'm going to tell you about the two middle grade that I wrote with my kids. And you guys are maybe thinking two that like normally we, re re we read a ton. But we have been reading a lot more picture books lately just um, because I like love picture books. And like I really want to get as much of that reading in while my kids are still little. And so we've been doing like different animals and uh, different holidays. We did some... Um, Valentine's Day and all that kind of stuff. So we've been reading more picture books and less chapter books. But so I'm going to tell you the two chapter books we read were The Bear and the Sea Lion. This is a part of The Lighthouse Family by Cynthia Ryland. Um, this s series is about a family. Um, they live in this lighthouse and it's a dog, a cat, and three little mice. And um, they rescue different animals that somehow need help near their lighthouse. And so um, each, as the series goes on, each book gets shorter. And these are are like so short that they're not even great um the past couple have like at least I learn we learn about the the um animal that they're rescuing and these honestly didn't feel really like you got much out of them at all so I think we're done with the series like I think we've read all the series and I'm glad because we're done with it um, next, so the next set is going to be the middle grade that I read for myself so we have Becoming Brianna um Truly Tyler and Remarkably Ruby. These are all a part of the Emmy and Friends series by Terry Liebenson. So um, Becoming Brianna is about this girl who, she is Jewish, uh, half Jewish. Her mom is Jewish. Her dad is not. Um, they are divorced and her mom wants her to have a bar mitzvah. Bat mitzvah? Uh, I don't know. And she is not sure if she wants to because she's not really, um, she doesn't really like align herself with the Jewish faith. She also is deathly afraid of like talking in front of people. And so she kind of overcomes some fears, discovers some things about her faith, discovers kind of who she is and what she wants out of all of it. And um, I really like that. 
Next is Truly Tyler. Um, so this is the first male perspective that we get in the series, and I really enjoyed it. So Tyler is um, Emmy's crush. So all of these, you don't have to read them in order, but you get to know the characters as the series goes on, and so I kind of recommend it. Um, but Tyler, he is a basketball player, kind of a jock, um, kind of Mr. Popular, and he is not sure that's what he wants. Like, he's not sure. Um, his, his dad is kind of in the picture, but not really, and they really only talk about basketball. He only cares about basketball. He has a big brother who's a basketball star, and he's, like, just not sure. He kind of wants to do art and um, have other interests besides just basketball. So I really loved that. And, again, um, having that conversation, I feel like as a middle schooler, I think they're middle school age in these books, um, I feel like it's really easy to kind of get pigeonholed into what friend group you're in, what activities you do, and it's really, um, like, it's that time where you're really trying to identify yourself but also, like, if, if that's not what you want to be identified as, like, you know, I don't know. I think it's a really um, applicable exploration. And then next we have Remarkably Ruby. Uh, and she is known as like baked bean girl or something because she has a lot of digestive issues. And um, so most of these books are told from two different perspectives. Truly Tyler, I think, and Becoming Brianna are both not. They're told just from one perspective. This goes back to the two perspective thing, and it's Ruby and Mia. So Mia and Ruby used to be best friends. Now Mia's kind of Miss Popular. Ruby has no idea where she fits in. She doesn't really fit in anywhere. She doesn't really have any good friends. A lot of people make fun of her because of her digestive issues. Um, there's just kind of a lot going on for her. And she joins Poetry Club because she's really good at poetry and kind of finds her niche there. And then um, Mia is running for class president, and so the girls kind of – um, go through some hard stuff remembering their friendship as it was and um, kind of rediscovering what it means to be a friend. So I really like these books. I think there's a couple more in the series. Um, and yeah, I really like them. Next, I read The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. I just have the dust jacket here because I read it and then my daughter wanted to read it. And so it's somewhere in her room. And um, anyway, we're going to hope it makes it out alive. But this is so sweet. This is a book told um, from the perspective of a gorilla named Ivan. And now Ivan is living in this like circus um, area and he is alone. Um, he has a friend that is an elephant and a friend that's a dog. And it's just about, um, he kind of get he does artwork, he does drawings and um, those artworks are sold. And he's got a friend um, that like one of the zookeepers, da his daughter, um, is a friend and she draws and so that's how it like got him into that and it's about friendship it's about freedoms this one it's based on a true story of a real gorilla that's now in the atlanta zoo i think and um this one just really like brings to light animal rights and um like animals in captivity if it's the right thing for them or not and i don't know it, it was really good really um like so you're getting the perspective of a gorilla and he's the one writing it's kind of like diary entries from this gorilla and so you don't get every detail you don't get like a super cohesive well you do get a cohesive story but it's not like uh this riveting plot based thing it's not that at all but it's very realistic for um the pr perspective of a gorilla and it's just a sweet character study and i really enjoyed it next um for the last middle grade we have picture day um this is brinkley middle school uh like yearbook club or something series i don't know i really despise this cover um and honestly it's by sarah Sachs. honestly i did not like this book at all this is about a girl who on picture day in middle school she decides to chop her hair off and just kind of again not fit into the status quo not be who everybody wants her to be be her own thing it goes kind of internet viral and she starts a trend um it's about coming into yourself friendship all that kind of stuff but i honestly didn't like this at all um, next is the one YA I read. So I read Heartstopper Volume 5. Um, for those of you who are fans of Heartstopper, I enjoyed this one. Uh, if you're not fans of it, don't pick this one up. Honestly, I give this three stars. Um, this is, so Nick and Charlie are dating. Uh, Nick is a year older than Charlie, and so he is starting to plan his university plans. He's um, deciding where he's going to go to college um, and so does he want to stay in town to be close to Charlie or does he want to go somewhere else? And so it's that, um, that, and that exploration I really enjoyed. And I really felt like, again, it, she does 
an authentic teenage experience in a way that is really hard to do. I think she captures the feelings, the sentiments of it all, the experience all really well. And this is an experience I had. I was the younger person in the relationship and, um, where my boyfriend at the time had to figure out where to go to college and how, to, how we were going to make that work, if we were going to make it work, all those kind of things. And so the the like she captures that really well. What I didn't like about this book is it is a lot of them um, – talking about losing their virginity and exploring that part of things. And I just don't need to see that part of things. I don't want to. I don't need to. Um, and there's a lot of talk, talk about that, which, again, probably authentic for a lot of people in this age group. For me, just not something I needed to read about. And so um, not my favorite. There is going to be one more volume. And so we'll get to see. Um, we know the decision that was made at the end, and we'll get to see how that plays out. So I'm excited to see that. But uh, this one's not my favorite. So now the adult books. So um, a lot of these I read for my um, February book haul revisit. So I will have that down below, but let's just get into it. So we have Four Weddings and a Puppy by Lizzie Shane. This is about, I don't know where this takes place. Uh, I don't know if it even says, but I was picturing like Colorado or some sort of mountain town. Um, there is Kendall and Brody. And uh, Kendall, Kendall and Brody, were they kind of grew up together and they were both skiers. He's now a professional skier, like really well known. She got injured and it kind of ended her skiing career. So now she is the wedding planner at her family's resort. And she's like anti-love. So it's really weird that she's the wedding planner, but she is. And now he comes back and decides to help her renovate some parts of the resort. We don't really know why because he's got a skiing career to go back to and he doesn't have any interest in doing that we don't know why but we find out um there is a dog that kind of b brings them together he um yeah it's it's a sweet story but very meh i'd give it three stars Next is uh, The Cafe by the Sea and the Endless Beach by Jenny Colgan. So this is her Mirror series. And this is uh, these are both three stars for me. The second one was the one on my shelf, so I read both for that book I'll revisit. And I won't say much about it except that um, this is about a girl going back to her hometown island in Scotland. And um, her, her boss um, and her relationship as they are trying to kind of save the reputation of this celebrity client they have who lives on this island. And um, yeah, then the second one follows directly after the first. So there's that. Um, three stars on both of those. I will be on unhauling those. Next is On a Quiet Street by Carla Kovac. And you guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I read this two weeks ago and remember almost nothing. And I gave it three stars. It's a thriller about uh, a girl, a, 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 I mean, a young adult, I don't know, comes to the door of this couple and um, says she's looking for adoptive parents. And he is like a serial cheater. There's a lot going on. Um, her birth parent or her adoptive parents are involved. There's a lot of scandal. But this is like, I mean... I don't know. There wasn't a lot of tension. The ending was really dumb. Uh, and it just, I, I didn't like it. Not good. Next, we have One in a Millennial on Friendships, Feelings, Fangirls, and Fitting in by Kate Kennedy. And uh, this one I gave two and a half stars. So I am a millennial, like right smack dab in the middle. Um, I grew up in in the um, 90s and early 2000s, just as all millennials did. And so I went into this book expecting like just fun nostalgia. And that is not what this is. This is a heavier book um, about all of the influences that us millennials got um, growing up in the time that we did. And now, I wouldn't say any of it was untrue. Um, it just was not what I was looking for. She talks a lot about like um, body image and, and kind of diet culture that we were raised in and how women and young girls were sexualized at the time and all these things that kind of made me feel like icky about when I grow up, like when I grew up, instead of looking back like fondly on those memories, it's like, oh, so all of that was going on as mind games and, you know, like, oh, you know, and it, it was just kind of depressing. Um, even though like there was the nostalgia bits thrown in, but you know, it just, it wasn't what I was wanting. And so that's, that's a me problem, not a book problem. Next is Like a Mother by Mina Hardy. This, uh, I gave three and a half stars. So this one was actually Okay, um, it was, I mean, it was a thriller about this woman. She's pregnant with her second kid. Her husband, they knew he had a terminal illness. And, and so he passes away at the very beginning. Like, we don't even meet him. Um, but at his funeral, this woman shows up and says he, she is his mother. And uh, the our main character has always thought his mother was dead. So she's like, really? What? Um, 
And so there's a lot going on with that. Uh, his business partners, because she she is, I think, a stay at home mom, and so she's like, okay, well, you know, we set up all this life insurance, all that, because we knew this was coming. And um, his business partner's like, no, he actually signed it all over to me. And his business partner, and specifically his wife, um, are being kind of threatening and saying like, maybe she's not capable of taking care of her kids, and maybe they need to adopt her kids and stuff. So she's feeling very threatened. And um, Candace is the name of the her the guy who died, his mother. Um, she's like, why don't you come stay with me? He, she lives in a different city. Like, get away from this all. Run away. I'll I'll help you get your feet under you. So. She does. Now, that was my biggest complaint about this book. It's like, girl, ask some questions. Like, if your husband said that his mother was dead and now here this woman shows up, like, there's more to that story. Let's ask some questions before we blindly take our child and move in there. Um, so as she's living with this mother, she's finding out more about her husband's past, finding out more about the mother. Um, things get sinister. But, you know, overall, it was just... Like the whole, if you can buy into that premise, uh, maybe you'll like this, but like the whole thing, like, I think there's another way, girl. Like, let's try something else. Let's ask some questions. Let's be a little smarter. So there's that. Um, then we have The Happiness Plan by Susan Mallory. So this is one, um, my mom, she is currently on vacation. They take a big vacation every winter where they're gone six or seven weeks. And she normally reads like a book a day. And um, she was saying she was in a slump and she couldn't like couldn't get into anything. And this is one of the books that she has with her. And so I said, well, let's buddy read it. I'll get it from the library. Let's buddy read it. So we did, and thankfully, I think it kind of got her out of her slump, but neither of us enjoyed this book at all. So this is about three women, all their friends, and they all have different things going on in their life, but the problem is that you get introduced to all these women, all the baggage, all the everybody in their lives, all the things all at once, and it's like, it's a cluster. It is a cluster, and throughout the entire book, like with these women fiction books, I need to either relate to a character, empathize with the character, relate to the, or like empathize with the friendship, be bought in in some way. And I did, I was not bought in on any of them. None of the storylines were good. Like I didn't care really what happened to any of these people and didn't really like any of these people. And so for a women's fiction like this, where it's just about their lives and all the, the things going on, um, it just wasn't good. And she agreed, you know, it was just, it was super chaotic, too many storylines, too much going on, so wide that it didn't go deep enough to get you invested. So, you know, uh, maybe a three star on this. And then last is um, this book that I got at the latest library book sale, Your Six-Year-Old, Loving and Defiant um, by Louise Bates Ames and Francis L. Ilg. Um, this is a book from 1979, something like that the 70s, I think. Um, so as you would expect, there are some things that are pretty outdated. Um, let's see. What, I don't know if it says when this was 1979. Yeah. So there's some things that are pretty outdated. There's some gender stereotypes and things that are um, not what I believe in for my kids. But um, they also are very upfront about the fact that like all kids go through things at different times. This is a, this is a generalization. Um, and, and the conclusion of which is six to six and a half is a very tumultuous time in these little people's lives. And I have a fresh six year old and, um, she like loving and defiant is a great way of describing her. She is the sweetest little girl, but she's also really at that stage where she's wanting both independence and uh, attention and kind of doesn't really know how to balance those or what she wants in every situation. So then as the parent, it's impossible to guess. And it, it reflects um, just developmental changes. You know, it's developmental changes. And so learning a little bit more about that, even though I would say about half this book seemed to apply and half did not, um, learning a little bit more about what's going on with her developmentally and um, just reminders of the normalcy of it all and kind of how it's all going and what's going on in her head um, was helpful. So like I said, I, I think the fact that I got this book for 50 cents, it was worth a read. It's um, gosh, not, not super long, uh, 120 pages. So I read it in a day or two and, um, yeah, it was, I, I enjoyed reading it. I have a couple of the other ages too. So it's just interesting. Um, I have a degree in elementary education and I taught kindergarten. So I'm familiar with six year olds, but it's so different, uh, having your own child and seeing all the ins and outs of them as opposed to just teaching them. So, um, some good reminders and yeah, anyway, 
that is everything that I read in the second half of the month. Um, I will tell you, March is already off to a bang. I'm in a really good uh, reading groove just because, like I said, we've been very sedentary, very um, just trying to feel human again. And so, um, yeah, doing good and no graphic novels this month. So we'll see. It's middle grade March. I've got a big TBR going. So I kind of like went too hard too early on the middle grade and I'm taking a little bit of a break. But anyway, that's everything. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.